good morning to the viewers and it's my pleasure to welcome all the panel for today's forum with us today are miss kogilawani the curriculum division officer miss yunis teacher from primary school in shalam teaching training institution lecturer miss Jessica and finally Dr. Deva Malal, senior lecturer from UNITA and head of philosophy department. And I am Stertini Selwaraju from the, mod the moderator for this forum. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Okay, as we all know early today, we are going to discuss the backing concept of education by Paolo Ferreri. Okay, before we start our forum, uh, we, we, are, we are having panels from different sector, sectors here. So, can I explain my view of today's topic? I, I would like to explain my view of today's topic. What can I see here about the backing concept is the traditional or old school method of our, our education system where most of the time the teachers will deposit their knowledge into students' mind, which is we call the empty bank account. We can relate to this as a teacher-centered as well. By the way, we want to look deeply at how this concept that we are used to implement for a long time can improve the current education system. As we know, our education minister has emphasized that the understanding of this concept should be changed so that it can be aligned to current national education philosophy. Today, the panels are here to talk about how the good understanding of this concept by educator can improve the education system of this country. Okay, let's start the forum. I would like here, first I would like to ask Ms. Kogirawani, the curriculum division officer from the education minister. By the way, she has 20 years experience in this field. Hi, Miss Kogila. How are you? Hi, Sitar. I'm good. And you? I'm good also. Thank you. Miss Kogila, uh, I think it will be better if you could describe, if you could describe the banking concept of education generally. Maybe there are viewers who still don't get the meaning of this concept. Hi, I'm Kogila Wani Lechumanen. I'm a curriculum division officer from Kulim Kedah. First and foremost, I would like to thank you for giving me this opportunity to be a part of this forum. Banking concept of education was introduced by Paolo Ferrere. It is a concept of education whereby teachers act as bank clerks, depositing information to students, which students then patiently receive, memorize and repeat rather than drawing out knowledge from individual students or creating inquisitive being with a thirst for knowledge. For example, asking primary students to memorize times 2 to 12 rather than teaching them the techniques of multiplying and how it works. Thus, the banking method is only applicable to students with quick catch-up ability as opposed to slow learners who may struggle to memorize. Thank you, Ms. Kogila, for good descriptions. But why now do you think this concept should change to the current education system? It's a very good question, Ms. Sitar. As we know, 21st century learning concept refers to develop mean learning, literacy, and life skill as the part of classroom experience. Learning skills encompass critical thinking, creativity, collaboration, and communication, which is essential to strive in the modern work environments. There are some innovative approaches such as flipped classroom, project-based learning, cooperative learning, gamification, problem-based learning, and so on, which leads to student-centered teaching and learning. These learning approaches give opportunity to the students to be motivated, independent, integrate, creative thinkers and encourage students to engage in learning. For example, I've given training to preschool teachers about fishing game. It's a fine teaching approach where students can easily recognize and memorize alphabets and numbers. Students are given opportunity to fish the alphabet instructed by teacher. 
According to one of my one of the teachers feedback, who is a friend of mine, said this approach really works as students showed interest in learning. This made the learning process much more effective. Thank you. Yeah, Ms. Kogila, I can say that, yes, you are correct. Even though the, the banking concept is a good, but what I understand is that all the philosophy or ideology or concept that we are think good or the best for the education system somehow need to some reshuffle so that it can be aligned yeah. to the current environment. Okay, thank you, Ms. Yeah. Kogila. You are most welcome. Okay, to discuss further, now I would like to call Ms. Eunice, uh, our, our teacher from primary school who plays the main role in our education system. Hi, Miss Eunice. Glad to meet you. I would like to ask you, you as a teacher, how you make sure to carry out this banking concept in a correct way? Good morning, Miss Sita. Thank you for um, giving me the opportunity to share what I understand about banking concept. So um, as we all know, Paulo Ferreira is um, basically the creator of banking concept. He describes this form of education as the fundamentally narrative in character with the, by the teacher as the subject who is the active participant and the students will remain as the passive objects. Now to add on to that, instead of communicating, the teachers uses the communiques and makes deposit which the students patiently receive, memorize and repeat. And this is called the banking concept of education. Now, this only allows uh, students to an extent to only receive filing and storing the deposits from the lessons. However, in my understanding, I believe that various other methods could be used in the classroom learning, such as the implementation of student-centered learning, whereby the teacher becomes the facilitator rather than someone who dictates the flow of the lessons. Besides that, it is also vital for the teachers to ensure that through the facilitation during the lesson time, students are perceiving the knowledge or skills that the teacher intends to deposit in the lesson learning. With that, students will not just perceive language or, or some sort of knowledge or skills, but also enjoy the lessons carried out by their teachers. Now, in that, we know the teachers have not just achieved the delivering of the acquired lesson to their students, but now they have become independent learners. Now, in that means uh, the students becoming independent learners. I would like to suggest wow. perhaps teachers could um, also produce their teaching methods using of what is known as the Jerry concept or the philosophy used in the national education, which derives with uh, the connection of emotional uh, emotional or spirituality sense of in the classroom. So to sum up, uh, teachers with very methods that they can apply or use in their lesson planning, given that it will benefit both the teachers and the students. Thank you. Oh, Miss Eunice, I think you are you are expert in this topic. I can see how basically we can modify the ideology that can fit to the classroom. Thank you, teacher. You describe it very well. So before Thank we you. continue our discussion, let me recall first what we discussed so far. The backing concept of education is the method where teachers play the main role as a giver and student as a pure receiver. Even though the teacher-centered method considered not more applicable for current education system, however, it still can use for certain subjects or for lower-level students who need the correct instruction from the educator. It will help them to move and learn in correct way. Meanwhile, as what the, and what Miss Eunice said just now, the educator should understand well the concept first and modify it so that it aligns to our national education philosophy. Hope we are now clear uh, about this topic. Okay, now let's continue with our next panel, Miss Jessica, lecturer from a teacher training institution, Pulau Pinang. Pulau Pinang. Pulau Pinang. Hi, Miss Jessica. Good morning. When we talk morning, to a teacher, ah, good morning. Uh, Sorry, Jessica or Chia Bin Chia Yin Yu Bin? Never mind, huh? Uh, both is fine. Up to you. Yeah. Miss, okay. Miss Chia or Miss Jessica is fine. No worries. Okay, Jessica. When we talked to a teacher just now, I really want to know how the teachers trained in a teacher training institution face the changes that are aligned to the current education system. 
Okay, so thank you, Ms. Seta, for the question. Now, before we moved into the context of uh, banking corporate in the teacher's training, so allow me to give a brief introduction to how we train teachers in the training institution. So it is divided into two. So in service, in training service, it is divided into two different uh, courses. So one is qualification upgrade focus and another one is knowledge skills upgrade focus. So these teachers have to fulfill a minimum of 30 hours. So uh, approximately five days in a week, training through workshops, coaching, mentoring, seminars, school visits, action research, publication and professional discourse. Now, when we teach um, students, we according to the banking concept so like what uh, miss Eunice mentioned and miss wani mentioned previously so we are trying to input knowledge depositing knowledge to the students but likewise in the teacher institution training institution we try not to do that we allow them to understand to why we are doing such things to why we are teaching such method to students because every students have different learning capability. So, you know, there are some fast learners, there are some slow learners. So how do we as teachers tackle students that are like such with different learning capabilities? So coming back to the branch of philosophy, um, I would like to address that there is an effort where teachers need to put in ongoing effort where knowledge is ever changing that there is no absolute knowledge teachers must be able to adapt to new developments like coming up with different set of pedagogy different set of teaching that allow students to know or can be able to learn in a comfortable environment so like there are, like I mentioned previously, we need to, the teachers need to know that there are certain strengths and weaknesses in each and every child. So teachers should be able to cater and fulfill the needs of such learners in a classroom setting. And coming back to my point earlier where <clears throat> teachers should adapt to uh, the part where they themselves has to be an agile learners. So I would like to relate to our COVID-19 incident, uh, the pandemic. So teachers are moved, are forced uh, to move to an online platform where one has no prior experience to. So when, in, when it's given in such circumstances, one must be flexible and can must be able to perform in an environment where we are not um, experienced, but at the same time, we must also be able to um, hold on to that uh, perseverance and technical technological advancement that it is given during that era. Now, and towards my last point, um, I do agree that Teaching is imperative for us to all have our educational philosophy when it comes to teaching. So for myself, I believe that every student is capable of learning and that we need to provide the space, a room environment for them to make mistakes. Now, not only making mistakes, but also acknowledging that each mistakes made in the classroom, it is for them to learn and grow. So in teachers training institution, um, banking concept is necessary if they can be able to navigate with an open mindset. So coming back to adaptability, so new changes as a way of learning, teachers should be able to make changes when necessary and not only teach for the sake of teaching. So uh, try to be able to, uh, um, how do I call this, try to be able to relate to their own experience when they are teaching so that the students can be able to see from a different angle and perspective. And that's it from, from me, Ms. Sita. Thank you, Ms. Jessica. You explained it very well. I hope the teachers really know what they need to do once they get their certificate, the teacher certificate. Thank you again, Ms. Jessica.
Finally, here we are going to ask Dr. Deva Mala, a senior lecturer from UNITA and head of philosophy department. Hello, Doctor. Hello, hello, Sitar. Hello, Doctor. I think you listen to everyone's point from all the aspects. In your opinion, what is the biggest challenge for the educators? Okay, first and foremost, thank you for having me here. It has been a very, very eye-opening um, discussion. I thoroughly enjoyed everybody's uh, point, and I think I myself, I'm still learning things, although, um, as you said, I'm a doctor, but I think that even as educators, we are still learning things. So what I see here is that um, this banking concept, right, this banking concept has imposed, okay, many big challenges for educators because this is a very narrative kind of a teaching. So the, the first challenge that I really see is that teachers or educators, any type of educators, not just um, uh, professional or, or uh, following the school, but any type of educators, they face different learning challenges, meaning they are so used to being uh, a receiver and just taking from a depositor, as I mentioned in the banking concept, they fail to adapt to new uh, realities. For example, as, as mentioned by one of our amazing uh, panel here, that COVID-19, really either you, you make the teacher or you break the teacher. And sadly to say, I have saw many teachers, you know, going through a depression, going through a breakdown solely because of adaptability. As we know, I think uh, during this COVID period, I don't know if the panels or you all have watched this video. It's about this um, South Korean lecturer. He forgot to unmute himself for two hours and ended up having a full-on mental breakdown and he had to seek a psychiatrist. And it was very sad to see that our educators are going through this. So I think that is one of the biggest challenge for educators now, that they need to grow out of that system. It's not easy, it's never going to be easy, but I think that the educators now are mature and strong enough to, to grow out of it and create a new system of belief. That is the first challenge. Second challenge is, um, this is more to a uh, siding with Miss uh, Eunice. Her, her beautiful point says this, that is more to relating to student-centered learning. So due to lack of communication, between the educator and the student, this may cause a challenge as well. Because even though they are educators coming in and saying, okay, students, here we go, we are going to have a discussion. But if it's going to be discussion, discussion, discussion all the time, then what is the difference between the banking concept? It's the same, it's repetitive. So this can impose another challenge for educators. Um, what I think is important in this time for educators is encouragement and motivation, which also can impose a challenge because during challenging times, COVID times and all, this can be scary for teachers as I think uh, old school teachers struggle the most with technology. Uh, maybe the 80s, 70s teachers, they struggle the most with technology during COVID. COVID was a very, very horrible period, but I think more of the 90s and so on um, educators, they were quite uh, ready for the, for the challenge. So, so we see the change coming in the coming generation, but we also need to understand that this is not an overnight thing. So these are the three challenges that I think are quite um, something for teachers to ponder about and work on it so that the coming generation can be um, creative and critical thinkers. You know, instead of saying that if you're a critical thinker, you're politicking. You know, we shouldn't say that to our students, but I think most of our students, they, they, they feel that way. They feel that if they have a critical thought, it's more of a politicking. Okay, we don't want a teacher's illusion to become a student's reality. That's all there. Thank you. I agree. I agree with you, doctor. Thank you so much. Yes, it's true. The educators face a lot of challenges. And you are explained very well. Uh, yes, Miss Jessica. This one's clever. Huh? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I thought it's like you want to ask questions. Okay. Uh, okay, Doctor. Thanks. Lastly, would you would you like to share about today's topic in more details? Yes, I I 
It's an honor, thank you. Um, banking concept can be applied, can, but to what level are we applying banking concept? Because the basic of every subject or every course or every program, you need a teacher to be depositing the knowledge and student being a receiver. However, we must be extremely careful with how the knowledge is being deposited, how the students are receiving the knowledge. That's one. Number two is that we have to create an interactive um, learning style style in the classroom or learning method in the classroom because it's students, we, have, we, we, we fail to realize as educators that when we walk into a classroom, we are probably teaching them one hour or two hours. But they are there from 8 a.m. until 4 or 5 p.m., sometimes night classes as well. They masters and students, we go for night classes. So the whole day, they are just receiving, receiving, receiving. And I don't think that's a good thing. So on that point, I disagree with the banking concept. I think that we can create an interactive learning, active, go outside, you know, instead of just the classroom and the four walls, because it can get depressing over time. Um, besides that, um, we can create a healthy relationship with the student so that we can always open the floor and, and you know open for them for asking questions, even correcting us when we are at wrong. And as educators, educators, we should not be offended by students' question or students' query, or even when they are correcting us, we should not get offended just because we are the educators. Because Learning has no age. Learning has no limit. Learning is always a learning. As a doctor today, I learn too. I learn from amazing panels like you. I learn from my students too. So we should, we should be able to adapt to this culture, you know, in the coming generation. We can make small changes, make small, small changes. And as the changes grow, one day I believe that our education system will be a very, very one of the top education system. Um, what I enjoy um, throughout this is that, you know, this one particular verse that was coming into my uh, head was that I realized that exams is actually a best memorizer, not a tester. Exam don't test you, but they just ask you to memorize. So if you're the best memorizer, you are the best student. We don't want that. We want to change and we want to make it that, you know, each different kind of learning, uh, each student have different kind of learning, each of them will be tested accordingly. So this is um, what I feel is quite what I understand from today's panel. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much, Doctor. Frankly speaking, you made my job easy. Actually, you did a good summary on this topic. Yes, again, I would like to say that the banking concept of education are basically a method that needs uh, to be understood well by the educator before being implemented in the classroom. The educator should not follow the methods fully, uh, but need to adapt and adopt it to improve our current education system that is aligned with national education, education philosophy. Here, I would like to highlight the quotes from Albert Einstein. Everybody is genius, but if you judge a fish by a, its ability to climb a tree, it, be, it believes its whole life believing that it's a stupid. So it's very important for an educator to understand it and cannot let their student have the same thought about themselves. Every student is different and the educators must make sure the students in the class learn in their comfortable learning zone and no one is left out or left behind. Eh? Okay, uh, before, I think that's all for today's topic. Uh, before I continue with this one, uh, do, do any panels have left out points that want to share or want to say anything before the end of this section? Any panels want to share anything else? Or Okay, I think... I think that's all for today's section. Here, I would like to thank all the panel's members who shared a lot of information about today's topic. I think we really had a good sharing section here. Thank you so much. See you next time with an interesting topic again. Bye. Bye. Thank you.